I'm Erica Lynn, and we all know the ocean is the most demanding environment on Earth, consistently testing the reliability and durability of our equipment. When you spend as much time fishing as I do, you know that reliable gear is essential for staying on the water. This is why I went with Abyss Battery to power my trolling motor, electronics, and outboard. The guys at Abyss Battery are rattling the saltwater industry by manufacturing performance marine batteries specifically designed for sonar, outboards, trolling motors, and electronic fishing reels. They're also Bluetooth compatible, so I found check and battery statuses right on your phone while you're out on the water is a huge game changer. To learn more about why Abyss batteries are used by the pros and factory installed by Premier Boat Builders, visit abyssbattery.com. Hello and welcome to the Publicly Challenged Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Oswald, and I hope you join me on my quest for knowledge to become a better public land hunter, angler, and forager. Stick with this and who knows, maybe we will learn something together. All right, so I'm sitting here with Austin Cantola of Genesis 3D Printing and, uh, Awesome. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit and tell us about your business? Yeah. So um, my name is Austin Cantola, like he already said. Um, so I live in a small little town called Ravana in Michigan. It's on the west side of Michigan. Um, basically born and raised here. Started um, basically um, when I was probably eight years old, hunting and whatnot, being in the outdoors. My dad is from a farming family. So we grew up in a, in a family that just loves to be in the outdoors, fishing, hunting, you name it, anything that has to do with hunting, we're out there or just outdoors, I mean, in general. So um, that's kind of a little bit about me. I have a, a wife and just a dog right now. We've been married for five years and she she's part of the, the Genesis team. Um, it's just two of us right now. Um, no plan to expand our team right now. Uh, we're we're happy with what we're doing and whatnot. So Genesis 3D printing is basically a 3D printing company that um, it, it was designed or created to help pay off loans, <laughs> student loans and all the debt, all the debt that we had. Um, and we're actually really close to getting it paid off. And um, I would say that this, uh, this venture or this business has turned into something a little bit more than that now, um, which is cool, um, which is really exciting and blessed to, uh, that God has given us this opportunity to just, come up with really cool innovative designs and um, reach reach guys that are trying to be a little bit more um, stealthy and just a little bit more efficient when they mobile hunt so yeah so so let's let's elaborate on that a little bit um so you make you 3d print uh, obviously you use uh i don't i don't think you mentioned it but you have an engineering background that helped you design and create oh, yeah. all these things and yep um there is just all kinds. I mean, what what did it actually start out as? What was the one piece that all of a sudden? And when we're talking mobile, we're talking saddle hunting. In case anybody yep. was wondering on that, but you, um, what, what was the first piece you created? Because I mean, you've got stuff for almost <laughs> every platform, every stick, everything. Yep. And there's yep. a way that it all snaps together. It's pretty interesting. So can you kind of tell us a little bit about the how it all kind of yeah. got started it i would say it got started um with the fact that i'm a cheap cheap guy and i didn't want to pay for an ascender um, for saddle hunting so a lot of guys are using like rope mins or kong ducks i i i just i just didn't have the money to be able to spend on one of those and i was like man i hate using my brusic um not or hitch and i just don't really like how it binds up it's hard to move get get your lineman all tied up and um, wrapped around the tree. And then it's a pain, pain in the butt to be able to loosen it up or tighten it up or whatever. So I started like kind of researching and seeing some guys using different types of uh, tenders um, basically. And so I, I started researching a little bit more and then I figured, well, I have this 3d printer that I've had for probably about three months um, when I started looking at it, stuff like that. And I thought, man, I'm, I'm tired of making stuff that just looks cool that I print and then sits on my desk at work. So then I started uh, using my design degree to design those. And basically, they replaced the need to have a mechanical ascender 
and they basically just tend your hitch and they can you can pull on the tag end and move your hitch up and down uh, your tether or your lineman rope so the lineman rope you could use it for tree stand hunting too um, so yeah that's that was the first first print I did um, it looked kind of crazy at first it was literally just a big um, uh, circle <laughs> wasn't anything crazy and then I was like man this is this can be better so I think there was probably like eight or ten iterations of that design so and, so you're still using the Prusik, but it's just something that aids it along and actually pushes it, right? right? So so instead yeah. of having to try and grab it with your hand, you can literally step up and, and, and jerk your bridge or whatever uh, carabiner that's attached to mm-hmm. it, and it'll just slide it along, right? Yeah, you're pretty much just, yeah, you're just pulling on the tag end. That's it. Okay. You pull on that tag end. It just um, basically takes the tender and pushes it, pushes it up the rope. And then that hits your, or runs into your hitch. And then that pushes your hitch up your rope. And then so, if you were to fall or something, that would slide down and your Prusik would still tighten up and then, right. and then grab, right? Yep, yep. Okay. So yeah, the, the tender is the, the figure eighter. It's just a tender basically is loose on there. It's not, it's not really tight on there. So if you do fall, it's just going to fall out of the way and then your, your hitch will lock up on you. Okay. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, so that's that was kind of the first design we did, uh, or I did. I keep saying we because my my wife and I do this business, but um, I do more. I do all the design work right now with the, the, with the help of one guy that I work with. He's been super helpful and whatnot. So, okay, let's let's. I guess we should probably rewind it a little bit. So you started the hunting out of state, right? And when you'd go mm-hmm. out of state, you didn't want to carry a big big tree stand. Yeah. And then you got into saddle hunting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's, I, let's go from there a little bit. So you started getting how, so you got down this journey. Um, and then I'm sure it just evolved because it seems like everybody is just wanting to try out something different, something new all the time. I've got a buddy who kind of refused to, uh, to get an actual saddle. He didn't want the mantis. He didn't want the arrow kestrel. He didn't want this or that. He ended up building his own out of a rock climbing harness, piece of felt, some mule mm-hmm. tape, and some other things like that. What was your first saddle that you went with, and then how did that evolve? Um, yeah, so the first saddle I went with was the – usually it's it seems like the typical uh, route for new guys that are just trying to test out the waters for saddle hunting is um, using a sit drag um, little harness thing not even a harness it's literally just something that has a rope that goes back to the tree or a strap and you can sit on the ground in it when you like ground hunt or turkey hunt i think is what it was designed for um but most new guys that are trying saddle hunting will buy that because it's like 35 bucks and pair it up with a rock climbing harness and that's pretty much all you need um to get going and whatnot so it's it's actually pretty it's not that bad i think it's actually really comfortable it's just more um the fact that you have to wear a rock climbing harness with that on top of it. Actually, and now that you I'm, mentioned that, <laughs> now that you mentioned that, that was what my buddy started. He bought the sit drag. It was like uh, 15 bucks on Amazon. And then yeah. he paired it with his rock climbing harness. But he said it was terrible how much it pinched on his hips. And that mm-hmm. was what uh, what inspired him to make the harness. And I said, well, oh, if yeah. that's the case, maybe I'll just buy one. I bought the tethered mantis. Now I'm looking at the other one and it looks better. Of course, you know, you want the newest, greatest. I'm not going to get it, but. Um, <laughs> um, Wife wouldn't approve of that. Well, yeah, probably <laughs> not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. What you'll find out with saddle hunting for anybody that's looking to start, I would say no saddle is the same for each guy. Like, for me, the mantis didn't fit on me because I have a, a decent sized booty. And so it would always like ride up on me. It wouldn't stay down on me. Um, but for other guys that don't have the same physique or shape of their body would fit them great. Fits them perfect. So I think when you, when you try out saddle hunting, just to, I think if you try one saddle and you don't like it, it doesn't mean that saddle hunting isn't comfortable or isn't for you. I think you have to kind of test the waters a little bit more than just try one saddle and being done with it if you don't like it. So, so after you moved from the sit drag, what did you go to then? Um, I tried the Mantis was the next one. 
Um, so that's that, that was the next saddle I tried. I, I actually took that to Missouri the two years ago um, when I went saddle hunting down there, and it worked. I mean, I, we sat I sat all day in it, and it was it was comfortable. Um, but I did find myself having to adjust it a lot just because of, like I said, the shape of my body, um, just wasn't the right fit for it. Um, and then from there, I was going to use that until there's last year, there was a lot of saddle hunting, uh, companies coming to the market. It seemed like, and, or guys that are trying to like make saddles out of their basement kind of thing. And I was like, I'll, I'll test this out. So then I bought an H2 saddle and then was going to use that. And then um, a local company that is making saddles in like uh, Grand Rapids area, which is like 30 minutes from where I live, reached out to me and asked me if I'd test one of their saddles out for this last hunting season. So that's what I used the whole hunting season. What so, what saddle was that? Are you allowed to say? <clears throat> um, I, I can't go into details about it. Okay. Um, but it's it's um the name of it is called the Method Saddle. Okay. Um, by lat and then the company is called latitude outdoors okay um su- super awesome guys um they basically all went to college together i believe and they are all kind of hunters or mobile hunters and they love just just the idea of innovation and whatnot so that's kind of how they started and um, they just i i don't know what how, i don't i really don't know how i built a relationship to be reached out by them but i thought this was a great opportunity to test out one of the new saddles that was going to hit the market. It hasn't hit it yet just due to all the COVID stuff, but mm-hmm. it was, uh, it was very, very comfortable for me. Nice. <laughs> I have to admit. Nice. So. Yeah. I'm always curious about that kind of stuff because you see so mm-hmm. many different ones out there. Um, oh yeah. And there, there's just, there's going to be more and more because now Hawk is coming out with one. And I think the, the Novix is going to come out with one, which is the lone wolf stands. So nice. Nice. So then let's talk about platforms. What did, what did you start with and uh, what are you kind of running right now? Mm-hmm. Um, I started with, um, a, I believe it was a primal step that I got from a guy on the saddle hunting farm. And it's, it's like a knockoff wild edge step and it worked. It just wasn't the same quality as the wild edge stuff. And basically what I used was a piece of plywood that I cut and it was a pretty thick uh, piece of plywood, about an inch, inch and a quarter, I can't remember. And I just would I cut it on like a T shape and I would slide it in there and it would lock in there pretty good. And so that's that's what I originally started hunting with. Again, I was cheap and I just wanted something that would work just to get me up a tree kind of thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, it was, it was a little dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, I made a, out of, I was like, man, I got my XOP and I really don't use it. Um, so I ended up taking the XOP seat off and did one of like the original, um, Mm -hmm. who's the guy that actually makes the platform, the tether Ernie. It was like the Ernie. Yeah. Yeah. It was like the Ernie, uh, style and I ordered some stuff. I was going to machine my own. And then I was like, this is crazy. If I can already buy it, why the heck am I going to make my own? You know, it's just, yeah. you get the idea in your head and you want to run with it. And then you're like, by the time I buy Wait. all this material, all this aluminum, all these different, yeah, all these different things. It's like, or right. I could just call up Dano, order some stuff from what is it? Somewhere East something outdoors or whatever it is. Yeah. Double and, steps. Yep. Double step. And then just build it. So I did that and it worked pretty mm-hmm. good. And I even used uh, some uh, some am steel on there for my did like the whoopee sling and all that, and it's just. And then I went back to the strap, but it never seemed to lock on good. Like, like it could hold me if I was just standing vertical, but if I tried to lean around the tree and step on that platform, mm-hmm. it would end up kicking out. <clears throat> yeah, and that's kind of freaky. <laughs> Oh, it is. That's what I used last year, but I I took it to a different level and actually 3D printed my own standoffs for that. (laughs) Okay. So let's talk about that. How do you get enough strength out of a 3D printer? Because it's just using like some type of resin, right? Yeah. It's, um, what I'm using is just a, uh, ABS or, um, uh, shoot. What's the other name of it? 
I'm drawing a blank right now, but like it's, a PVC it's a UV. or something. Um, I've used polycarbonate um, before, but that's it's a little bit difficult to print. So what I've actually used is oh, it's called ASA. It's a uh, basically the same as ABS, but it's UV resistant. Okay. <clears throat> Um, with 3D printing, it just comes down to um, how your layer lines. So when you print, it's basically like a hot glue gun, and it's just controlled by a robot and or stepper motors is what they call them. And basically, it's like a CNC machine. You just tell it where to go, and it just spits down the plastic in a precise way. It sounds not very precise the way I described it right there. But, but yeah, it's pretty no, we get it. <laughs> I yeah. mean, everybody's so, seen them at this point. Everybody's seen a 3D printer. I mean, you yeah. even get like Instagram feeds of, you know, super cheap ones that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, so I think it just comes down to knowing like with printing, um, knowing how your layers are going to lay for your part and running those accordingly to how the stress is going to be on the part we use in like the field. So like all my designs I've thought really thought out like how do I make this as strong as possible like um, laying them down and making sure that all my layer lines are going to run away from the stress or perpendicular with the stress that it's going to be in so that maximize, maximizes the strength so okay. I, I would never I would never sell those standoffs or even I make um, like a ring of steps that I've used or still use and I actually really like them I would never sell them to a guy but I I mean I'll use them every day <laughs> So they're actually strong enough, but liability wise, I get, I get why, why we wouldn't sell those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm a little too scared of that. So like, is that why on your bow hanger, it actually says not a step. Do you put that on every single one of them? Yeah, I do. Um, so that, that's, that was one of the things that guys gave me feedback on is like, Hey, you might want to put this on your bow hanger just in case somebody thinks it's a step for ring of steps. And I was like, yeah, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Has anybody ever tried it and got back to you on that? No, no, nobody has tried it. Cause I've, I, I feel like I've been a pretty ahead of the game on that and been pretty, um, uh, I would say vocal or just make sure that's something that people understand. Like this is not a, this is not, a, this is not a step for you to climb a tree with, or even use as a ring of steps. Um, but I mean like with those bow hangers, I've tested them up to 50 pounds and they don't break. So if you're a small child, maybe they'll be fine, but they're not, they're, they're not meant for adults to step onto. <laughs> Let's talk about, you got this thermosel clip and I've always wondered oh, yeah. why does the thermosel not come with a clip? Do they sell a clip for it? They do. They sell this little clip, but it comes in like a package and you have to buy the package and it's like 20 some bucks. And I don't know why they don't sell it as an accessory option that you could buy from them. Hmm. Um, but they do, they do have a clip, um, that they sell, but it's, it's with a package. The clip is just like a spring loaded clip. So it would work. Um, but it's just one of those things like you would just have to spend a little bit more money to get it. So were you one of the ones that spent the money and then afterwards was like, this is silly. Why don't I just make one or how'd that come about? Um, I had a lot of guys from down South and like Louisiana, um, Florida, Georgia guys, they're just say, just telling me like, Hey, I have to use a thermosel all year round when I hunt. Can you make something that I can clip this on the saddle or on my gear hanger that makes it so it's not like just resting on top of my bag. And I was like, Oh yeah, I have a thermosel and I know there's a slot on the back for it. <laughs> so I just, I just took some measurements real quick. And I, I mean, that was probably one of the easiest designs to do just because it's like, just got to take, take these measurements and then get it get it printed. Oh, that was just a little off and then print it one more time. And then it was good to go. Nice. So, so let's talk about sticks then. Um, so when you first started out, what kind of, I mean, were you using steps then to climb up the trees or what, what um, were you using? No, the, the first, uh, sticks that I used were just, uh, DIY sticks that I made. Um, again, I, I bought the tubing from a guy on saddle hunting form and it came with the, the, the double steps, but it didn't come with any standoffs. And again, that was too cheap to buy the standoffs from like lone wolf or somebody else, just because I don't know, I had a 3d printer. Let's print some standoffs. <laughs> so I actually printed the standoffs for that too. Um, and I used those and I, I think they were just because the 3d printing, the parts that you print, cause you don't have to, they don't have to be a solid piece. You can print like, uh, intricate designs within the part to help give it strength. 
And so my, I, I think the sticks that I used, I thought when I measured them, they're about a pound, 1.9 pounds. So they're pretty actually light compared to other sticks on the market. So how long did those last before you went down a different road or are you still using them? Uh, last year was my last year. And now, now that I started uh, Genesis 3D printing, I'm like, I think that I can afford slash use some other sticks for testing and whatnot. So then I, I, I tested a bunch of sticks um, for different products that I make. And then I was, I settled on the B sticks um, for this coming year. I do. I'm not completely sold as in, I love the B sticks. Don't get me wrong. I love that they're fixed steps. Um, nothing's moving on them and they stack straight up and down. Um, but I, I also have a set of the carbon fiber sticks from the Timber Ninja guys coming. So wow. definitely going to run those too. <laughs> so what's the price point on like the carbon fiber sticks? Oh, I don't even want to say it because I feel bad now. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, it's, it's 120 bucks. So For three but, or four sticks? That's just for one. Oh, that's so. That's about the price of a set of six. Well, I guess maybe not. I mean, because the B sticks it's are close. a couple hundred bucks, right? Yeah, the, I would say, I think the B sticks are 80, 85. I can't remember a piece. And then like the Shikars, are, I would say that more um, high end sticks are coming to market now, but you can buy the Hawk Helium sticks for right around that same price for one stick or the API sticks. Um, so I would say that they're definitely probably one of the most higher price sticks, but they're also, um, with the carbon fiber sticks, they're the first carbon fiber sticks to the market. So I think they can sell them for a little bit more and their quality is pretty high. Yeah. No, that's interesting. That's definitely interesting. I'm always looking for, so I had the, um, XOP, I don't even remember which ones they are. They weren't the ones that were recalled. They're the newer ones mm -hmm. and liked them super light love the way they lock together all that what i don't like is it's a single step and then you can flip mm -hmm. them of course but when you're in the tree going up or coming down it's kind of i don't like it because i'm yeah. i don't know how i'm coming down whether i'm going to come down exactly the same way i came up especially if it's a gnarly oh, yeah. looking tree and to me i didn't like it so then i ended up going with the uh the hawk helium sticks that's what I've got now. And they lock mm -hmm. together, but I don't like the way they lock together with that funky su suction cup design. They don't stay oh, yeah. locked together. No. Nope. So, with that being said, <laughs> that, I believe, with that being said, I think I know where you're going. <laughs> yes. So, I believe you came up with a solution for that. Yeah, I did. Um, I call it our stick mule system. Um, basically, how it works is you have to take off your stand, one of your standoffs and... Um, a set of your steps and whatnot. Basically, they just slide up the channel, and then um, there's two fingers that are designed to basically, when you take your other receiving stick, um, you can actually snap it into those two fingers. And there's a, like a little pad that they'll um, touch off onto on that stick that's being snapped into it. Um, but it locks in there crazy, crazy solid, and it comes out super easy too when you twist the, the standoff. So, yeah. That's another thing, like, guys were just telling me, like, I, I mean, I don't even know if, I don't think I had a guy that reached out to me and said that, hey, can you make something that will work with the Hawk Helium sticks that will lock them in better than the suction cup? I just saw a lot of people complain about the, the quality of them, where they were breaking, and, um, or just, I watched videos of guys shaking them and ha hearing them rattle around, and I was like, <laughs> man, I feel like there's something there, like, there's yeah. a problem to be solved, and um whatnot so so yeah that was that was one of my biggest things yep. is i bought them because i was like oh look at that attachment they somewhat lay flat they don't mm -hmm. i i yeah. want and this is i hope somebody comes up with a, a set of sticks that lays completely flat when you stack them but somehow mm -hmm. locks together yeah and if they oh, don't yeah. maybe that's where you come in i don't know <laughs> but maybe i don't know if 3d printing I, you know, that's the liability stuff i don't know no no not about much. the set of sticks i'm just talking the attachment oh. point but yeah. oh i can do that then <laughs> yeah so then you yeah. use your homemade platform that you got then what do you graduate to next because i mean oh uh, yeah i actually went the same route as you um i built a diy platform 
out of a just an XLP lone wolf. I don't know which seat it was, but just the cam over um, one. And again, same kind of feedback that you had where solid when you're standing straight up and down, but when you put any side pressure on it, it kind of wants to kick and it makes your stomach drop real quick. And then you start thinking about uh, hunting isn't worth my life kind of thing. So then I, <laughs> I uh, went into uh, this business and that's when I actually started getting platforms to test out. And I actually have tested literally every platform that's on the market and whatnot. So I have a lot of options to choose from now. Can you, think, are you, are you allowed to talk about like your opinions yeah. on them or? Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I don't have any, um, I don't have any problem sharing what I, uh, what I personally like. Um, so I personally like, um, the predator just because I don't know, it just seems like you can get that thing really locked down. You just kind of push it down with your foot and then you can just kind of bring that seat down and it locks in there really easily. Um, don't, you don't really have to get the strap really tight. You get it as tight as you can, as much as you can. But if you pull that, um, that post down with your kick, like you just step on that post, it's going to lock in there really easily. So just from a, um, easeability for using that, that's probably my favorite platform. Just from an all around standpoint, um, I really, I do like the, the lone wolf, um, assassin platform. That's really old that you don't really see on the market right now. Um, that's yeah, just a that's larger like, platform. Yeah, that one's non-existent anymore. Yeah, no, that one's uh, like a keepsake kind of thing. Like you give that to your grandkids to pass on <laughs> to your next generation. Which is basically kind of just a cam down version of the lone one of the lone wolf tree stand uh, platforms, it's, right? I mean, that is. Just, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I I think that they're uh, with lone wolf. Um, getting rebranding themselves, they're actually probably going to bring that back to market, I think. So um, I think if you're holding out for one of those tree stands or you have been just hold or those saddle platforms, hold out a little bit longer. It's there's one coming, I think. Well, are you so, talking like lone wolf or lone wolf custom gear? Lone wolf, I believe um, okay. just based on what I've seen on social media, it seems like um, they shared, they shared a photo um, of them teasing that platform coming back. So, okay. So it's cool. It's cool to see all these new platforms kind of popping up. And like, um, I talk to Matt from out on a limb, like every week we are either texting or chatting and whatnot. And he actually made me, um, a extra large podium platform, which I'm pretty excited about that one too. Um, because I, I do think that there's, there's a, a, a place for larger, um, platforms for guys. And I think that I, I personally actually really like a larger platform. That was kind of my my whole thoughts about like the predator. I get it, um, you know why why you would want it super small or so it's not like dragging or getting caught up on things. But at the same time, mm-hmm. I mean, if you say you're doing an all day hunt, and that was the one reason I ended up going with the saddle, um, I found that sitting in like a smaller tree stand was just hard on my back, leaning up against oh, yeah. the tree all the time. And with the saddle, I could get a little more range and more mobility out of it without, um, without doing a whole lot more movement being that I was already Mm -hmm. in the semi standing position anyway. Yeah. So that's kind of why I ended up going with it. Now I don't fully or exclusively saddle hunt. I will admit that I'm still not a hundred percent sold. I think to me, the main thing is, is, you know, I mean, you see all these Westies, the Western guys that go out and they've got their entire camp on their back, shoot an animal and throw the animal in their pack <laughs> and pack it all out. And then you've got guys yep. in the Midwest that are worried about walking, you know, a mile or two deep onto some public <laughs> ground that they got to take their stand with them. And it's like, oh my yep. gosh. It's so, so I'm kind of caught up with that where it's like, just shut up, Luke, you know, stop being an idiot. Just pack it in and pack it out. <laughs> but I I still think um, for like a stealth standpoint, you know, uh, mm-hmm. if, if you get the sticks up a little bit quieter and then just put your platform up, you're not having to worry about hanging. A, I don't know. You know, yeah. The, yeah. I see I no. see advantages to both, but I definitely yeah. I, I like the aspect and there's times and there's also some trees to where there's just some areas to where you're definitely not hanging a stand in it, but you could easily put a platform and attach yourself and so oh for sure i still like it and i'm I'm, i need to get 
a new platform. But so you're saying the Ridge Runner, like a Ridge Runner type or something like that, or a podium? Is it Ridge Runner makes the podium set, uh, podium platforms? Yeah, correct. Matt Matt from Mountain Limb makes the Ridge Runner, the podium. He ha- he has like what he calls the Scout, um, the Solo Scout. He has got so many platforms now, and he's got a an XL version of the Ridge Runner coming that he's bringing to market soon. And those so, are all aluminum. And- those are all aluminum, yep. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they, he makes some pretty solid platforms. Um, I just, I for me, um, I prefer to have like the kind of cam over seat um, or cam over platform kind of thing where the bottom kind of digs into the tree kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, his his uh, design is a little bit different. It's very similar to like the wild edge ropes where it kind of you pull it away from the tree and it kind of cams over and locks in. Oh. Okay. So, but it's still there's once you get them in, they're they're rock solid. So, and what's what's some of the other ones that stood out to you? I mean, what about like the ambush or the Kirchner's? <sighs> you... Yeah, so I tried the ambush. A guy sent that to me, and um, to be honest with you, that was probably the one platform I uh, least liked. Um, and it wasn't because it was just so expensive. It was more I had a really hard time getting that solid to the tree, which is crazy because. If I was envisioning it to be like the predator um, and how that can, I, I can get that really solid to the tree. Um, but I would push down on that post and get that strap as tight as I could. And it still felt like it didn't really dig into the tree. And um, the top portion of the, the post where um, you have your standoff up there, whenever I would uh, bring that seat over and cam it over, um, it would actually pull away from the tree for some odd reason. It wouldn't stay tight so that was the one platform i actually didn't really care for and it wasn't as light as i thought it was going to be um, and sh- i think it was right around five pounds um advertised and i don't I, I don't i think i remember it being that light when i had it but i can't remember exactly so um yeah and i'm trying to think if there's any other platforms that i tried i think that's pretty much all of them so so yeah. so you're saying probably all around like if you gave it an all around score probably then the predator platform would be your your first yeah. choice yeah i would i would say so just because it hits so many different um angles of mobile hunting whether you're early season mobile hunting um do, you can do all day sits in it i would say and then even like the late season when you're all bundled up it's not like a huge platform where it's very difficult to get cammed over or get set up um it's pretty dang light and whatnot so and it, it's just rock solid to the tree it takes side pressure really really well um so i think coming up this season that's probably unless some crazy company comes out with another saddle platform which is probably possible based on mobile hunting market right now that's probably going to be my my go-to platform for this fall so let's talk i i see um i don't know if it's a brand saddle that you're using or if it's um but it's got like a kidney belt is that just a way that you you use that kidney belt to carry your stuff in oh the are you talking about the battle belt i don't know what it, yeah yeah just above the saddle when mm-hmm. i wear it yeah so um what i use that for is just early season stuff when i don't really when i i where i hunt i hunt on private land it's right behind my house um, so what I'll do when I get home from work, if I want to quickly go out and hunt, I'll just keep my sticks on my battle belt, which is just a heavy duty belt, combat belt that you can just clip in sticks around my back. They lay horizontal. Um, and I'm with the B sticks, they barely go past my hips. So, um, walking through the woods, I'm not going to get it caught on anything. So then basically I'm just, I'm going in light. And the nice thing about that combat belt is it sits above your hips. And the weight is like, if you use any pack style, um, backpack, like a solid has a good waist, um, waist belt on it. It feels just like that, where you just don't feel the weight on your back. Um, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's really nice. And with that system that I use, I use what I call, I have, it's called the stick mule system. And basically when I get to the base of the tree, I can just take it off those Versa hangers and then I can just literally pivot the sticks and they're now hanging vertical instead of horizontal. Um, so it's, it's a really quick and mobile system. Cause my thought process when I get to 
the base of a tree is I want to start climbing right away. I don't want to take off a bunch of stuff and have to figure out what I'm going to do. It's hit the tree and start climbing. That's pretty cool because I mean, my whole setup is sticks are on a pack, take the sticks out of the pack, hang them on loops that I made on my saddle. Hope they don't Mm -hmm. fall out of those loops and start climbing and pulling sticks as I go. And then, so, I mean, that's, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how easy is it then to to actually, I mean, can you release them one-handed or do you need? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so it's it's designed, um, the stick mule clips that I have is literally just like a, a clip that goes around the one-inch tubing. Um, and then it has a built, designed-in bar- Versa button in two spots. And basically all you do when you put them in the Versa hangers I know it's kind of hard to explain over audio, but you basically just slide it up and then it slides um, to like the left or the right out of the channel. And then it just swings over and it's it's out of, out of the burst hanger and just kind of dangling or hanging there. But it, it's not swinging around because I used what you're talking about before mm-hmm. where I hang it like a piece of paracord from my, my sticks. But the downside of that is when you climb, like naturally your hips are moving left up and down. So when you move your hips going to want to pull or you just you're there's a lot of motion going on that you just can't really control because it's just a natural motion when you climb um with the paracord everything's just swinging around with my system everything's locked it's solid it's it's going to follow your hips but it's not going to swing uncontrollably yeah no that's exactly sounds like exactly what i need (laughs) for my sticks because it it I I don't like anything about the setup. I actually thought about maybe just going and getting another set of sticks because I didn't like the way they locked together. And to be perfectly honest, I don't like the fact that it's only three sticks in in the Hawk Helium sticks. Mm-hmm. I want a fourth. Oh yeah. I'm are the, you running the full length? I'm running the full length. Yeah. Yeah, and those things are heavy. <laughs> well, they're heavy. Yeah, but like I said, I you can't really complain. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's guys yeah. going out shooting high country mule deer. <laughs> and yeah. So I'm my whole thing isn't so much the weight aspect, but the convenience of having it all together, having it to yeah. where you can just twist them, whatever. It's it it's um. So it's just hanging there and everything's silent. My biggest thing is the rattling, the clanging. Um, when I carry them, like I tied like a like a slip knot like a lasso or something on um on some mule tape and put them around my shoulder and it's like they mm-hmm. dig into my shoulder or I stick them in a pack and lash them down on the pack but then I got to take the pack off and then um you know take them and then hang them from there so it's just kind of steps I want to eliminate you know if you're yeah. setting it down and it- there's leaves in the fall or something you're trying to be quiet uh, mm-hmm. It sounds know. it sounds exhausting listening to you talk about it. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just it, it yeah. I'm always trying to come up with ways to help out with that. So that's that's definitely cool then. And uh, yeah, it sounds like I know with what what platform I'm I'm going to then for sure. Um, mm-hmm. So what else what else you guys got in your lineup that you're making that's something really cool or innovative or you got anything really really cool in the works? Um. Yeah. So I mean. That's the, that's the most exciting thing about what I'm doing is um, I love the creating new innovative designs that just aren't out there. Um, and some of them are out there, but they're just not done the way we're trying to do them um, or the way I'm trying to design them. So um, the biggest one I would say right now is we have a camera arm that we're working on. Um, that, that guy, that friend that I was talking about that I work with at my day job. Um, we've been talking a little bit and he's been trying to help out with that. So that's kind of a cool one that we're trying to bring to market for guys that are going with a lightweight camera arm. Um, cause again, like I said, you can 3d print something and not make it solid, but you can still make it very strong. Um, so that's, that's one that's just more, it may not be one that I sell to guys, but it may be one that I use at least, um, kind of like with my steps, um, and standoffs kind of thing with, I, <laughs> I just don't don't want to put it in the hands of everybody else, but I, I personally would use it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one. Um, I'm actually, I just uh, recently finished this design and, and testing it right now, but with our stick mule system with that built in Versa button, it's meant to be modular. So uh, 
the idea is that it will work with a bunch of other designs for different purposes. So I have a way, I've thought about this a lot. I have a way for people to efficiently climb a tree with the sticks on their side because I have the Versa button or Versa hanger that works with a saddle. I have the Versa hanger that works with a, a belt now. So it's a little bit bigger. So it, you can put like a one and a half inch belt into it uh, for tree stand hunters because a lot of guys are asking for that. So I have a way to climb a tree efficiently. I have these stick stack stow is what I call it. It's basically just a bunch of clips that go on your sticks and they clip into each other. So you can, I did, I did a design for the Timber Ninjas guys. Um, and basically all your sticks lock together and you don't need straps. You don't need ropes. So that's, that was kind of what that kind of stemmed from is we, they wanted a system that would lock all the sticks together. So I have a way to climb a tree efficiently. I have a way to lock all your sticks together efficiently, but I don't really have a solution for guys to pack them efficiently. So I actually um, built a little block system that would take our stick mule system and you could mount it to the bottom of a platform to the bottom of a tree and it will work with on any platform, any tree stand. Um, I think I said tree, tree stand, sorry. Um, but that's kind of one of the new new products that I'm working through um, right now that I'm probably most excited about because I think it's one of those things that will not only hit the saddle hunting market, but it will hit the tree stand hunting market or hit uh, be available for those guys that tree stand hunt. So, so you're saying not, not only could you haul it like with your saddle, you're saying if you had a tree stand and you wanted to snap your sticks to the tree stand, correct? you, you could do that as well. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's um, it's really cool too because of the fact that you can put it anywhere on on the base of your tree stand on the the grooves or um, whatever you want to call them. Um, it'll mount to those on any angle, um, and then basically it just allows you to slide this built-in Versa button system, like the stick mule system I was explaining, into that channel, and then it locks into it, and then your your sticks are solid on there. And then when you get to the tree you can literally just slide them out and then put them onto your, your reverse hanger on your belt or on your saddle. Nice. So, so yeah, that's, that's probably one of the big ones that I'm probably most excited for, but um, I actually just had to shut down our site starting after tomorrow to get caught up on orders. Cause it's been um, very overwhelming with the amount of orders. Cause I think people are starting to find out about us, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah. And awesome. But at the same time, um, I don't want to, I don't want to get so far behind on guys. Um, that's one thing I, I, I've tried not to be, um, like all the other kind of companies that are in the saddle hunting comp- uh, business. They just feel, feels like everybody's behind on orders cause it's booming. So I don't, I, I don't want to be that kind of guy that takes on orders and don't, I don't get them fulfilled for like a month. So, yeah, I hear you on that one. I waited mm-hmm. quite a while on a saddle. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of guys. You weren't the only one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about attachment um, as far as sticks. What what are you running or what have you found that's about the mes- me- best method, like the rope or are you sticking with the traditional buckles that they give you? What what are you doing? I'm a sucker for that and steel daisy chain, man. Um, I just, that's what most guys have been uh, kind of sharing on social media. And then I kind of, I kind of bit the bullet and I said, well, I'm going to buy some. And I, I bought some and made my own daisy chains out of it. Really easy to do, um, very cost effective. It's not very expensive and it's super lightweight. I mean, you can fit four of those ropes or chains into your palm of your hand and it weighs next to nothing, but it's super strong. So that's what I'm using. Um, I just, I, I can get those sticks locked solid. I even use it on my predator platform. Um, so really? I, the, stra- the strap for the Predator platform is probably the best way to get that thing solid, but the Amsteel Daisy chain works great too. And it's doesn't make any noise and it's super lightweight. That's interesting. I, I use mm-hmm. on my sticks, I use a Daisy chain webbing mm-hmm. that I got. Um, but I got to say, there's been times I stepped on the top step and I don't think I had it tight enough on the tree. And that whole mm-hmm. step or the whole stick actually kicked out. And that's oh, yeah. when you learn your lineman's belt, how good it actually works. 
<laughs> if you're still attached to the tree. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, no, I kept that lineman. I keep it on because, you know, you're taking sticks on and off the whole time. Safety oh, yeah. first, right? Yeah. I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. We've all got families <laughs> to come home to, and it'd be better sure to come do. home in one piece walking than uh, not. So. <laughs> yeah. My wife's going to love listening to this podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I've, I'll be the first to admit that I've done a lot of stupid things tree stand hunting before, um, mm-hmm. including putting them up. And I'm talking like even permanent stands that I've hung up um, without anything whatsoever. I got one stand that I didn't think was high enough. Deer kept spotting them, spotting us as they'd come over the crest of the hill. So I moved it up to about 35 feet, maybe 40 feet. Um, mm-hmm. And when I did that, I still, up until a couple of years ago, I didn't even strap myself in. So Yeah, was um, the same way. Yeah. So, I mean, I got to admit, done a lot of stupid things. Fortunately, been lucky. I've never been one of those kind of guys that can fall asleep in a tree. I'm mm-hmm. always too amped up and excited for what's coming. Oh, but um, I'm the opposite. <laughs> I know a lot I'm of a people. Sleeper. I know a lot of people that can take a nap in a tree, and I just, I to me, I can't. That's like napping in the car. I don't really, don't oh. really do that either. Even if somebody else is driving, I always want to be awake and see what's coming up next. So. Uh, and you're missing out on some good naps. <laughs> it's just my personality, I guess. But yeah. Um, but so I've never had to worry about falling asleep and falling out of a tree, but there's been a lot of stupid stuff and I can't believe, you know, and then mm-hmm. one, one day I was just like, man, I've got a family. What, what, you yeah. know, when you hear stories of people falling and it's like, I, that doesn't need to be me. So I know it happened to my uncle um, too. And he actually really hurt himself. Um, So I was, yeah, I get right what you're saying, man. It's scary. And I can't believe I've done some of the things I've done in a tree stand. (laughs) Like standing up on on the seat of the tree stand so you can get a better view of something. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. So, yeah, definitely. Um, That's interesting that you use those, though. Um, I'm going to have to look Mm -hmm. into that a little bit more because I I don't know. I don't – can you – do you use like a whoopee sling at the end of it or something to make it tighter? Or it's just straight up a daisy chain. I've just used straight up daisy chain. I've, I've used whoopee slings and I think they work great. I, I would actually use them if I, um, if I need, if I needed to or wanted to, I, I think those work great too. Um, so just it comes down to what I think that's a hard thing. It's just personal preference. I think everything, like what we're talking about, the stuff that I find works great for me. And there's, like I said, like some platforms are great. Like what Matt's got going for out on a limb is he's got some awesome products, but I just found just personal preference. I prefer a, a daisy chain or um, the predator platform kind of stuff like that. So you get, I would, I would encourage anybody, especially anybody that's new to saddle hunting, try, try, try stuff out. And if you don't like it, turn around, sell it on a on a social media platform. Everybody's buying stuff. I love gear, so I'm always trying to on an eternal quest to perfect things and find new things. I mean, but man, I appreciate it. Thank you for coming on and talking to us all about this. Can you tell people where they can find you and find your products? Yeah, so um, I have an Instagram account and a uh, Facebook account that you can reach us at, um, or go check us out at Genesis 3D Printing. Uh, on both of them and then we have a website um, that's just genesis3dprinting.com so you go on there and shop Um, that's right now the only place you can buy our products Um, you can get uh, we do do wholesale pricing um, or wholesale options with Daniel over at double steps for some of our products so if you are shopping over at double steps you can pick some of our stuff up there too so cool that's awesome Thank you so much, man. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, I definitely look forward to purchasing some of your stuff and uh, getting out there and trying it and seeing what you got coming up next. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. It was awesome just to kind of chat and get to know you and kind of share some stuff that we're working on. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Yep. Once again, thank you so much for listening to the Publicly Challenged podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show, and if you did, please subscribe on whatever platform it is you're listening to. Also, if you could leave a review, that would help us out. And you can check us out on Instagram 
or at publiclychallenged.com. And once again, thank you so much for listening to the show. Thank you.